Right, 24th of August 2021. I went on a Loxton Hutton Bleeding walk yesterday, exploring some new areas with the intention of going back to finish what I couldn't complete because I, it, the weather wasn't very good and um, I needed to come plan that route better, that other one. It's not a distant, long distance place. Um, today, I've taken a few photos as I've walked through Cheddar and I wasn't going to do any videos. But I thought I'm going to do one or two. This is at just after the start of the walk. And I'm going up the, rather than going straight up past the cave, which is a bit further over the steep walk. is isn't, it, it is steep. This is steep in places. I thought I'd do this slightly longer but more but not quite so sharply steep so my my bag is always very very heavy at the start of the walk very heavy it's laden with water and food it's also got today my hat and a windproof I put my shorts on but there is quite a breeze, and I've heard people saying they feel quite nippy. I've seen people with <coughs> slacks on and jumpers and coats, but they reckon it could reach 25 today, and I believe them. But with that breeze, don't feel it in here. I've got a summer jumper on, and it's not a thin one. It's, um, it is quite substantial in many ways, and it's light. It's my poppy one. Just show you. Here we are, it's Sheila. And it's my poppy top. I've got a David Bowie one with the bluebirds on it. Um, but I'll, um, I'll, I'll wear that another time. This is my, I like wearing this, this poppy one. It's, it's bright and cheerful. So is the swallow one, but, um, So I just thought I'd introduce anything happening in the world, anyone? I've, I've been tre self-treating a teeth, teeth abscess, which has quietened down, let's put it that way. I doubt if it's gone, it's quietened down. I've got an appointment at the end of September. Despite the problem, I told them, they couldn't fit me in to the end of September unless I make an emergency appointment. That's how they get money out of you, actually. They can drain another £23.50 out of you if you have to have an emergency appointment. It's not, it doesn't come under the um, checkup and any treatment. It doesn't come under that one. They actually get more money out of you if they do that. So I'm trying to hold on myself. I don't like dentists. They stir your mouth up as well. They're only in, then what it is with some of them, the delayed treatment in many of my cases have led to me having to lose a tooth, to be quite honest, and the problem getting worse. Whereas compared to the past, I could be, I could phone up, quite often be seen the same day, and then no abscess. I only got abscesses in the last five years. I might have had one as a kid, but I can't remember. I probably did. But uh, no one spoke about it. It was just toothache in those days. And your mum used to cram aspirin into the tooth and uh, used to be crying with pain, I remember that. And then you'd go and see Dr. Payne. Mr. Payne was actually my dentist. But he was a pioneer. He'd been to America. So he was like the top gun, if you like, of that surgery. And he really, really helped me with my teeth. He, he saved me, really, because... I'm not going into details, but dental hygiene in those days, when I was in the 50s, went, was a problem for a lot of people. Some people only brush their teeth once a week, or if they're going out somewhere. It wasn't, do you know what I mean? Not like these days with flossing and all that. But I do remember that, uh, 
you did get seen. And you did get treatment, even if it was mercury fillings. So, yeah, no, I think, really, I say the past five, ten years, the stand, I think, unless you're paying, if you pay, they probably rip you off as well, by the way. Yeah, they're ripping you off. But if you pay, you probably do get seen. But you have to pay. <sighs> anyway, that's the start of the day. What I'm just saying is I've taken two... No, I haven't taken them yet. No, I haven't I'm not in pain. I have got two paracetamol in my pocket. Just in case. There's a niggle. And I'm out. But at the moment, it's all right. So this is the introductory walk. I'm walking up the slow path, up the gorge. Whenever you come to Cheddar and you want to go anywhere, you've got to climb up here. Either way, up the middle, up the other side, or up this side, you've got to climb up. Right? That's the pleasure of the mended pills for you. It makes your cardiovascular system work. As for the world, well, there's only a couple of days left for the British and the other countries, including America. America is setting a deadline for withdrawing. I think it's the 31st of August, a couple of days. And uh, everyone else has got to get out there because they won't have the protection of thousands <coughs> of American troops if they don't all get out. They would be... A bit like that film Zulu. The British would be surrounded by the Taliban. Holding on to the airport. <laughs> I can just imagine it. Um, so then, folks. That's what's happening. They can't take everyone. They're taking thousands. And they've even been allowed to send in commercial airliners now to get the people out. But some people haven't got the paperwork. Some people haven't passed the test to enter Britain, but this is an emergency. So they're all going to be put in a camp somewhere, I should imagine, unless they've got the proper paperwork. But I've always said this, though. This happened before, when we had the, the uh, ISIS thing was collapsing. We started taking in lots of people. Germany did. Norway, Sweden, they started opening up the doors for refugees. And what happens? Some of those people are actually the enemy. They're letting them in and they're infiltrating into the society. That is the other that is another view. I'm not saying it's mine. We've already got a problem with all the people queuing up still in France to get over here. People in camps. People in camps over here, if you like, special places where they put immigrants while they're waiting to be work sussed. So you could find a place like Bridgewater, for example, though it's riddled with COVID at the moment. Um, as said on the news last night, Sedgemoor is the highest risk place in the country. And, um, but you can just imagine a community like Bridgewater, or somewhere up north, having to take on two or three thousand people from Afghanistan now, and trying to integrate them into their community. And of course we all know ghettos form. People collect in their own communities. You would, wouldn't you? If you, if you go abroad, you, if I went to go and live abroad, I would probably seek out English people, or people who could speak English. Just so that you could communicate um, and share things, even though you're interested in the culture that you've moved into. But in the beginning, you'd probably want to feel like, you know, there's backup. Anyway, this is what I tell people. You come on a walk with me and people think, oh, let's look on there and tell us all about Cheddar. No, that's not me. That's not this sort of journal. This is a visual diary and personal uh, journal. And I talk about what's happening in the world as I walk. Or any feelings I've got. It's a diary. 
it's not a historical, although I bring in history and I will bring in references and talk about roots, that is not my motive. Okay, so I've got people who follow me because they like listening to my stories. I send people to sleep, the insomniacs, you know, but it is still a way uh, of following me slowly on my walks. I'm going uphill actually if I'm slow. I'm sorry, but I'm going uphill and I'm nearly 70. <sighs> I have to point that out when people say, oh, you were talking about your teeth. And I think, well, yeah, it's a diary. It's a record in time. I only wish, as I've said loads of times, that my ancestors had left such a record. Of course, they didn't have audio 500 years ago, a thousand years ago. The Romans only had plate, you know, tablets to write on. A lot of people couldn't read or write. I've got ancestors of mine who look at the wedding certificate and they've put an X because they can't write. They can't even write their own name, some people. If you find someone in your tree that's got been able to write a book or something like that or done a bit of tree work, I mean, that is absolutely a gem. And I have got people like that in the tree. And of course, the Victorian age groups, they used to keep diaries. And I am very sure somewhere some of my Victorian type ancestors would have had letters, would have had events recorded somewhere. And of course, photo photography came along photography came. I mean in the past people, even the Stone Age, used to paint on walls. There's, there's often been a pictorial history and story for us to follow. That was very common, wasn't it? You know, like Bibles were often in pictures for the illiterate to be able to follow. That's why they were highly decorated, the churches, with imagery. And of course they learnt all the words off by art. Didn't have to write them down. And if they didn't learn them, they'd be punished. So basically, this is what I ramble on about when I'm out. I actually cover all sorts of things. There's somebody coming, just seeing somebody moving. I actually cover all sorts of things. Anyway, I'm going to turn off now, folks, when I get to this gate. I've just seen somebody move. <sighs> Fortunately, I've got over the worst part. <sighs> got over the worst part, folks. Over and out. <sighs>